Parshas Balak, Tovshin Ayintes, the moon. Fifty years ago, this Shabbos, July 20th, 1969, was the first time that human beings stepped foot on the moon. My Rosh Kolo reversal Shechter Shlita, upon his father's insistence, actually purchased a television set to watch this event and promptly gave it away to a guy the very next day. As amazing a feat as it was for people to land on the moon, we as from Jews, seeing the moon up close as we did then, had to say, Morabu Masecha Hashem, how great are your creations, Hashem. Since the beginning of mankind, we have always been curious and desire to understand Hashem's handiwork. We are driven to explore. This is part of our nature as a Tzalem Elohim, as the Medrash says, that Hashem told the ministering angels about the first man. Human beings are wiser than angels. They have free will. They have a desire to investigate, to discover, to create. Rav Hirsch says, this is what the divine will implied when Adam was told, Milu es ha'aretz v'kiv shuha. Fill the world and conquer it. Explore it and make it yours. As the quote-unquote Eretz expanded in the 1960s to include the bodies of our solar system, man has taken giant steps and leaps outward, culminating in a lunar landing a yovel ago. The creativity involved in such a project is mind-boggling. Rav Chaim Vital explains the familiar pasuk of Hashemayim misaprim kvod kel, the heavens speak of the honor of Hashem, umaisa yodo of magid harakia, and the sky tells of his handiwork. Rav Chaim Vital explains this is not praise that these bodies say in words, but rather that the very orbits and makeup of these planets and stars declare the existence of the one who created them. Their existence and functioning praises Hashem more than any words can. Rav Hirsch explained the Pasuk of Laose Shemaim Bisvuna, which means to him who makes the, ev- the heavens with wisdom. Rav Hirsch explains that Tvuna isn't just knowledge of basic facts, but the comprehension of the interaction and interplay between the various bodies in the heavens and how each one influences the other. Simple rules like Kepler's laws of planetary motion already gives us an awareness of how tricky things can be when mass and distance are variable. Adding in other factors makes the calculations incredibly complicated. This deepens our appreciation of the godless of Hashem. The Rambam in the second parak of Hilchas Yisodei HaTorah tells us that this appreciation of the magnificence of the Creator and His world should be used to approach Avas Hashem and Yiras Hashem. When one thinks about Beruav Haniflaim HaGedolim, the wonderful and great creations, the Yira Mehen Chochmaso, and we see from them Hashem's wisdom, She'en Lo Eirech Ve'en Kates, that there's no limit and there's no end. When one thinks about that, one will love Hashem and want to know Him by following His Torah and mitzvahs. The Chovos HaLavavis in Perik Beis of Shara HaBechina claims that the Pesuk in Yishaya which states, Su'umaro meinechem, lift up your eyes on the high place, Uru'u and see, Mi baro ele, who created these things? Hamotzi b'mispar tzivom, one who brings out their host by number, Lekulam b'shem yikro. They're all called by name. All these things have names. Merov onim v'amitz koach ish lo nedar. By the greatness of his might and because he is so strong in power, not one of these things are missing from the heavens. Says the Chovos HaLavavis, this Pasuk is not just teaching us that examining the heavens will bring us proof of Hashem's existence, but rather that it's a directive almost a mitzvah, to become aware of the lessons learned from space exploration. Considering the complicated nature of it, perhaps we can use the Gemara in Shabbos Ayin Hay as a clarifier. 
Kol hayodea lechashe betkufos mazolos. Anyone who knows how to make these mathematical calculations. Ve'eno choshev olov, ve'eno choshev, and does not make them all of akosiv omer about him, the Pasuk says, ve'as pol Hashem li'abitu ma'is of yodav lo'ro, that he did not look and didn't see Hashem's works. This is only for someone who has the ability, mathematically, in physics, to understand these things on a high level. But for one who can't make such calculations, he's not going to be referred to in the negative way that the Pasuk does. The Bryson Brachus Daf New Testament base tells us to make a bracha of Osam Asibereshis by Birchus Achama and also says to do that for Kochavim Bimisilosam, for the planets at the starting points of their orbits. Ben Yonah on the Rift perhaps trying to explain why we don't make five more brachas today for the five planets known since antiquity says that these Zmanim are only known by astronomers. Not everyone can un- understand these complexities. However, I'd like to suggest. Everyone can view the pictures, the videos, and the reports that are toned down for the layman that are being produced this week in commemoration of the anniversary of the first lunar landing. We can all be amazed and proclaim Marabu Masech Hashem and be thankful that we live in a time when Hashem granted man the wisdom and ability to view more of his Bria. In Kel Adon, which we say on Shabbos morning, we conclude by saying, Shevach nostim lo kol tzva marom tiferes ugedula. All the hosts of heaven give praise to Hashem, rendering glory and greatness. Mepharshim say that the first letters of the words, Shevach nostim lo kol tzva marom, stand for the five planets. Shevach shabsoi, Saturn. Nosnim noga, Venus. Kol Kochov, Mercury, Tzva, Tzedek, Jupiter, and Marom, Madim, Mars. Today, in 2019, we can see and appreciate even more how celestial objects are rendering the glory and greatness of Hashem. This week's anniversary should give us a reminder of the godless Habore and infuse us with Avas Hashem and Yiras Shemayim, encouraging us to increase our practice of Torah mitzvahs. Wishing everyone a good Shabbos in Brooklyn, the bungalows, and beyond.